Oh, sorry, Graham. Yes. Graham, how are you? Yeah, good. Uh, tired after the first three days of summer school, but um, yeah, encouraged by my students and their progress. I think they're, for the most part, a lot of hard, hard-working bunch. Yeah. Um, <laughs> for the most part. For the most part, yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, they're very eager. And this is the first time I'm doing summer school, so I'm also keen to get feedback at the end of it. Mm, you learn from it, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a learning, a steep learning curve for me as well. Loving the new textbook, that's been the highlight so far. Yeah. Um, yeah, stuff, Duff's era is over. It's over. The, <laughs> ray, the king is. Yeah. The king is dead. Long king, live the king. Yeah, long live the king. <laughs> yeah. The King's actually uh, co-authored. So. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, can you tell from the front who's paying attention? Can you see in the eyes? Yes, for sure. Um, <laughs> yeah, you should play this for them on Monday before I come here. Uh, no, I can do. I mean, I, you know, from having preached a fair bit, you know, I can, oh, okay. I can definitely look and um, not intimidate, but kind of, kind of invite <laughs> more attention, just with a bit of, you know, compel to the corner of the eye, really. Or like the Jonathan Moore's eyebrow, you know. The that is way too relatable. Yeah. Like, if it, especially like in COVID when we did a summer school, he had a mask on, so the kind of the you just see the emphasis was here. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. So as you're speaking, it goes higher. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you might get fired. Let's <laughs> <laughs> Well, don't play this part too. Okay. But he knows. So I'm here with. Oh, sorry, Graham. Yes. Graham. Yeah. Um, um, and we're gonna do. So he's our summer school teacher for the first year, teaching Greek. Yeah. You took Greek last year, correct? Did Greek, I picked up after Steve, who did summer school last year, and I did Greek 1 and 2. Um, so yeah, this will be my first whole year of teaching Greek. Sure. Um, and yeah, looking forward to it. Okay. He, I, I noticed he's got a Pikachu on his on his laptop bag, and I sort of I think we connected on on Pokemon. Okay, yes. uh, and I thought we're gonna do. A Who's that Pokemon? So first up, Bulbasaur. Bulbasaur. Awesome. You got it. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, Blastoise. Blastoise. <laughs> oh. Alakazam. Was it Ka Kadabra? Yeah, you got ah. it. I also thought, like, when Kadabra, I. Kadabra? <laughs> yeah, maybe, yeah. Abracadabra. Oh, Oddish. You sure? Is that your final answer? Yeah, yeah, that's. Ah, oh, Executor! <laughs> oh, come on. Too confident. I should have. That's a tough one, then. <laughs> yes, it is. One. I can't pronounce it. Yeah, Executor, yeah. Uh, have you ever, like, sorry, so this is this. But, like, when you talk to people about Pokemon, and they like pronounce a Pokemon a certain yeah. way, and you, you go, oh, you should put it like that. I don't know what his deal was. Uh, he called Bulbasaur. That's Onion Turtle. Geo Dude. Punchy Rock. Yeah. yeah. I, I think you're wrong. Yeah. yeah. I've I've watched. I've been it. saying it like this for twenty years. You know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a fantasy book. You read the characters' yeah, yeah. names, and you, and you don't know. say them. Uh uh. Yeah. And you want to talk about it. Next up. Oh, Geo Dude. Geo Dude. I liked his design. Yeah, oh, he's yeah. great. He's great, um, and he's better than the other three. Oh, Mewtwo. Mewtwo. <laughs> uh, how old were you when when Mewtwo Strikes Back came out? Is that the first film? Ah, uh, yeah, it was the first film. The best film too. Yeah, it is the so first cool. one. Uh, I probably watched Mewtwo Strikes Back in high school, yeah. um, so a while back. I was playing the original Pokemon games. You know, they were what made in '99. Mm. Maybe you. 97. Um, so I was playing those in the early 2000s. Sure. Yeah. And was this on the Game Boy? On a Game Boy, yeah. Sure. Like red, blue, and. Yeah, yeah, I had yeah. yellow on my Game Boy, and then later I got silver. So, oh. But I never went past that. I think I, think I always um, kind of longed for the, the original 150. I would say, like most Pokemon fans, mm -hmm. you know, they're, it's all about them. It is, yeah, they're the main characters, eh? Yeah. They stole our hearts then. Yes. Uh, the new the new Pokemon look like 
robots were like... Yeah, yeah, just, just like they ran out of ideas. Um, yeah. <laughs> and they just needed to make more to, yes. to sell more cards. And, um, yeah. More games. More games. More games. Yeah. And they've got like more evolutions. I don't know if you've been following yeah, and different and... Uh, I've so lost. That's why I kept it here. Yes, no, no, that's the original 150 and the unnumbered Mewtwo, so... <laughs> Interesting. Very cool. I, I just have one thing on Mewtwo. Mm -hmm. uh, that one, the quote from... We're like at the end of the film. Like Please, yeah. Mewtwo hovers with, with Mew and looks down. Do you remember that quote? Really? I mean, I'm trying to now. It's been a long time since I watched that film. It's like profound. Yeah. I mean, I feel like Pokemon is often exploring the human problem. Sure. Uh, but I don't know what he says there is... I see now that the circumstances of one's birth are irrelevant. It is what you do with the gift of life that determines who you are. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's, uh, I, was, I was wondering, I watched, I've been watching some of the series again with my boy, and, um, and there's an episode when all the Pokemon, both from Team Rocket and the Ash and Misty, end up together without their trainers. Yeah. And, um, and Pikachu says to Ekans, he says, you know, you're, you're a bad Pokemon. And he says, there are no bad Pokemon, only bad masters. Oh. And also thought that was quite a profound... Sure. Pokemon did hit you occasionally in the fields, you know, it does, if, you, yeah. if you had an ear for it. <laughs> <laughs> I like that quote, but I also like the, I mean, I love the movies. Um, well, the movie, I've watched a few of the others. And yeah, they're, they're not. not uh, have you watched the short, like, Pikachu's Vacation? Mm-mm. Uh, it's also, it's just fun. Again, like, just Pokemon. Okay. And then just... he, Pikachu gets entangled with a Raichu, and they're, like, battling okay, out no, over big... it. <laughs> I watched Pikachu Bed Detective, but not really a Pokemon movie. What, is your, uh... what is your opinion on that? Oh, I laughed. <laughs> I mean, there were some great bits. Mr. Mom was funny. Yes. I think, like, everyone who grew up playing and watching Pokemon, all we want is to see battles. Yes. And um, they didn't have enough in yeah. the movie. We so wanted like... I think we want to see Pokemon fight. That's what it's about. <laughs> it's not what it's only about, but... We don't think about the ethics yeah, of... Yeah. of, not the, of <laughs> is it is this like animal fighting or... Yeah, no, just... just um, we want to see Pokemon battle. Yeah, that's know? right. So that, I was a bit disappointed. Yeah, yeah. But the movie was funny. And um, that's... I think that's what it was. It was entertaining. Yeah, I suppose. And it's like... It also supposed to like hit a wider audience as well, not yeah. just the Pokemon, yes. Pokemon fans. Um, what else I was gonna say? Uh, yeah, so much to talk about so when it comes to Pokemon. We can we just get a coffee. Pokemon. That does not look like someone from the <laughs> original cast. Um, you encountered it. Oh, is it a rune? One of the symbols. Yeah, I don't... Unknown. Oh, unknown. Do you remember? In the caves. Yes, in the caves. And then it blurs like it's... It glitches out. I don't know where they fit in, but I thought it would be fun. No, that's, yeah, that's really a good one. Um, Sloking. Yeah, spot on. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Oh, that's it. That's our quiz. Well done, Graham. Yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. Two on. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, you know. I should have brought you a prize. My high school self would be very proud. Okay. Uh, <laughs> already now. No, now, now your mind is full of... Uh, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's better things to fill our minds with, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Graham, so I'd like to ask you, how long have you been teaching? Yeah, so in February, I would have been teaching for a year yeah. uh, only. Um, I finished my master's in 2021, and I started teaching Greek last year, started 2023. But like I said, I didn't do summer school, and so... My first kind of full calendar year mm. will, will, will be in February, sure. uh, when, when we start Greek 1 term time. And what, av what advice would you have for the first years? That I just finished the first week. Uh, yeah. I encourage them? Um, maybe a bit uh, unconventional, but I did spend a few, uh, probably an hour on the first day talking, to, talking through some of the uh, kind of obvious benefits of being able to read Greek or New Testament Greek mm. to read the Bible in the original languages and of course in the bigger picture to study theology yeah. I think tremendous benefits for the church for the individual um, but there are also I think dangers that are um, 
part of becoming trained. And so the advice I always give, and you know, maybe it'll become the thing I say, but I've said it already a few times this week, is you can, you can master Greek and you can fail in, as a disciple. Oh, wow. um, and I think that's the advice I gave. You can ask the second years now. That's what I've often said to them throughout the year is we're working hard. We want to become, we want to become better exegetes. We want mm. to interpret the scriptures faithfully so we can teach them well, discern error and all that. But we can lose sight mm. of what we're actually doing. And in the end, that's not, that's not to become um, better at whatever craft it is we're doing, whether it's Greek or something else, but to yeah. to become disciples who love God, love His people. Yeah. Yeah, like with great power comes great responsibility. Yeah, yeah, there's the dangers there, right? <laughs> and the, some of the students, I think, are already alert to some of the, you know, for example, with, you know, when it comes to exegesis, the, the closer you look, mm. um, the harder it is, I think, to step back and appreciate that when we read the Bible, we're hearing from God. Yeah. And so, if I do spend, if the majority of my Bible reading is, is exegetical work, mm. while I might become, I might be able to write great papers, even preach great sermons, yeah. I can quickly forget that this is God addressing me mm. by His Word, and He can do that whether I read Greek or Hebrew or not. That's true. Um, <laughs> yeah. So maybe that's, yeah. <laughs> no, I think you touched on something that's very, I think, a sensitive point among students like how easily we can become our studies can become devoid of any spirituality yeah so i'd like to ask you how did you have you felt like the edifying effect of mm. greek in your life how have you applied it to not only academic but just for your yeah. personal i mean i've uh yeah, my friend's chat's gonna roast me but <laughs> I, I never miss an opportunity to punt my blog so <laughs> i've written a bit <laughs> link in bio, <laughs> yeah, link in bio. Put it there. Rekindled, I'd say, I'd say. I, um, I, <laughs> I've written a bit about this, and I think uh, there's, you know, the, a great paper, and I want to say maybe even Jonathan Moore put me onto it, but is a by the 20th century theologian Simone uh, Bale, and she talks about the, the proper uses of of study, mm -hmm. and she's talking about study generally, and I kind of read that last year, went through it with my students, and you know, she makes some really great points, and the two points that I've taken away from that and which I've tried to apply for myself and for my students is that when you learn anything that's very demanding mm. and, re and, uh, and requires uh, discipline, mm -hmm. which Greek, of course, <laughs> is a, it's a labor, you mm -hmm. know, it's meticulous, it's tedious, it's, it's long hours, repetitive. It's, it's repetitive. And that can very easily just become Again, it's quite just a something, and it's Simone. She says, you know, as you train yourself, as you discipline yourself, mm. you're actually training your attention, mm. um, and you an attention. She says is the is the key ingredient or one of the key ingredients for prayer. Oh. Um, and so she says that as you spend pour over Greek, and you are actually habituating yourself for longer stints of focused attention. And that, if, if we're not doing that when we're praying, I'm not sure what we're doing. When we pray, we're turning our hearts to God. Yeah. And the problem is, you could concur. I know for me, I get up in the morning, sit on the couch, get my coffee, yeah. and I, you know, I read, and then I want to pray, but my mind is already wondering, you know? Mm, yep. Oh, did I... What I need to do? Gotta leave the stove on. That email, you know. Oh, we're mm -hmm. gonna. What's gonna happen this evening? You know, he's mm -hmm. cooking dinner, uh, and so you know, as Simone argues, if I can train, or if I can see that even while I'm training for Greek, I'm actually, tr I'm disciplining myself. Sure. And that discipline, you know, we talk about the spiritual disciplines. Yeah. They require effort and attention mm -hmm. and time and focus and actually Greek. In some ways, and it's a it's a weird one. Often, mm. it's not one you maybe you would hear often, but it's a it's a kind of roundabout way of saying it it, it can enrich your prayer life. Um, and then the other thing, maybe if you've got time for another one, is in that Good. essay she also Good. says um, that failing can also be a profound exercise for the Christian disciple. Sure, because in failing, 
you obviously have to learn, practice humility. Yeah. And also, like the Christian life, it's, it's not a series of victories. Mm. Um, it's, a, it's a life lived under the banner of the great victory. Sure. And it's a life, I think, with any honest Christian would say, full of hard failure, of disappointment, discouragement. It's a long kind of journey that we take when we fall off to Christ. And before we get before back up. Before we get back up and yeah. actually agree. Also, trains us in, in that as a way of keeping on, persevering, um, of not growing tired. You know, oh okay of, yeah of doing good yeah of, and and of not growing discouraged you know because you know in the end we 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 benefactors of grace you know mm. it's, that's what's gonna that's how God's gonna get us through this life and you know into glory you know? Mm. and so we we learn dependence through failure you learn humility mm. dependence and also I'd argue perseverance so again two kind of disciplines that Greek can, and look, I feel like the, the a lot of the other benefits are well documented. You know, oh, yeah. Read any introduction to a Greek grammar, and they will tell you about you know exegesis, faith, you know discerning error, correcting mm. mistakes, all of that as well. But mm. I've liked the um, the less orthodox route that mm. Simone Well took, and um, yeah, that's what I'd say. I think I think that's also awesome. Like I've never thought of my academic ventures that way. That it can sort of you say everything is worship, we do everything for God, but how that can kind of translate yeah. onto, onto our spiritual disciplines. Um, and I think it's a, such a great philosophy, actually, just to see failure as part of the process. Yeah. Um, like I like to say, you either win or you learn. Yeah, and, yeah. If, and if your objective is to continue learning, you'll, you'll never lose. Yeah. And it's so awesome to hear you say that. Um, can I ask you, what has been your, uh, like, what has driven you this far? like to pursue a master's and what has kept mm. you going? Yeah, that's a, uh, I mean, that's a long story. <laughs> I don't know if you have time for it, but I think I left college and I, I did, a, I was fortunate enough to have the opportunity to do an honors. And uh, while I did my honors, I was involved in youth ministry and I had this wonderful, uh, what would you call it, almost this kind of, I hate the word tension, so I'm not going to use it. But during the week, I was sitting reading John Owen, did my honors in John Owen. Um, and then on, on a Friday and on a Sunday, I was, and obviously at other points throughout the week, with coffees and um, midweek group, I was discipling teens for the mm. most part and then some young adults. And, and I think then, at that point, I kind of said, I would love... You know, and I've prayed for the opportunity to to have a blend mm. of of kind of what you would call theological teaching training mm. that's not you know taking place outside of but alongside what I do in the local church. Like and I, yeah, and I think that's in many ways what kept me going as I you know went into full time pastoral ministry. Mm. I always worked very hard at trying to keep my Greek. Um, both so that I could use it in pastoral ministry, reading my institutes, um, <laughs> which I also, you know, have found use for, great use for in, post in pastoral ministry as well. John Calvin was a pastor. Mm. Um, and yeah, kind of staying theological sharp, sharp mm. um, trying to continue learning. Mm. I, think, I think it's too easy to finish college and to shelve the books and to forget that and actually, you know, it's an it's a ongoing means of being equipped to shepherd, to teach, to lead. Mm. Um, and so I'd say that's what kept me going, not, not always with a clear kind of goal of, oh, I'm going to come back and I'm going to teach at some point, mm. but actually because I decided to and saw the value of that ongoing study in mm. my own life and ministry. So that's, mm. that's probably it. Yeah. Uh, it sounds like you kept the main thing the main thing. Like you thought about, or you, 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 <laughs> this, you, that's how you were thinking about it, like, how can I best serve God yep. with my study? It wasn't about you. And I think that's like a pitfall. It happens so easily. Yeah, definitely. And, um, yeah, and I think uh, Privilege Tafire, he's, uh, he finished his honors, I want to say last year, but <laughs> yes, sorry, did, Privilege. Yeah. If I'm, and you know, he wrote a great article for Gospel Coalition Africa. You know, we talked about some of these pitfalls. Mm -hmm. and I think that's a, that's a big one. Already some of the first years when I asked them were able to, to say, yeah, you can... 
you can quite quickly, your studies can become abstracted. Mm. Um, and that's true of exegesis as much as it's true of the doctrine of God. You know, as soon as, and we can use some Greek here, you know, as soon as my, in my studies God becomes the object of mm. what I'm doing, I've, mis I've, I've gone wrong somewhere. Um, and it's the same for our reading of the Bible. As soon as I become someone who is kind of trying to master, under, you know, really understand, and so that I can package it well for, you mm -hmm. know, and I've, in, in many ways I've become the subject, and the scriptures have become the object. Yeah. And I'll test my fish is on that on, on Monday. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but I've always loved a quote, and I mean, I've, I've rolled it out already in class, and Don Carson, in, I can't remember where now, but you know, he talks about, the, he says that, don't for a second think that God wants people who have mastered the Bible mm -hmm. in his service. He wants people who have been mastered by the word in his service. A great quote, all credit to Don Carson. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, 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 it's wonderfully true. And like you say, very easily something we forget, right? Because, sure. um, you know, as I do the hard work and, you know, to present this great thing, mm -hmm. no. you know, you remain a servant, you know, who is, is, it, is first subject to God mm. and then a servant of others. So, yeah, I would hope. I kept demanding the main thing at times, sure, and mm. others, no, yeah. That goes back to our point about Simone Bell. You know, yeah. we fail, God is gracious, we persevere. Yeah. So sure, this seems like a start of a much bigger conversation, much needed conversation. Yeah, it was so great um, having you. Thank you for agreeing to this. It's a pleasure. And I'd like to ask one final thing. Let's do it. Who is your what is your favorite Pokemon? Oh, I was hoping you'd ask that. Um, look, it's a tough question. Um, I finished the game typically with five Pokemon. Okay, typically. Um, so I can give you the five. So All right, let's go for that. So, and then I'll pick one. Sure. So a Blastoise. Okay. Yeah, naturally. Um, a Dragonite. Dragonite. A Wigglytuff. Okay. Okay, just a <laughs> slightly out there one. That is a bit but out Wiggly of tough, <laughs> Wigglytuff always used in conjunction with Gengar. Okay. So as a team. So Wigglytuff puts them to sleep. Gengar uses Dream Eater. We get back so our health, health, right? Yeah, yeah. And I said five, and now I'm going, was my fifth? Was it a, wasn't rock, ground, plant Pokemon? Oh, maybe it was any of the, I'm gonna have to come back to you. Fire was, one? Did, or was it Dragon? I, no, no, so you're right. It was a Jolteon. Oh, okay. Um, an electric Pokemon. Oh, okay, that was the, I Because I always went for, Squirtle, who will forever be my favorite Pokemon. <laughs> I, was, yeah, I, was, I was always biased against fine Pokemon. Oh. <laughs> that was the, so I'm sorry. I'm sorry to Charmander. So, yeah. you know, there's some great fire Pokemon. I love an Arcanine, but um, yeah, it's... Uh, was it the cannons that got you to pick Squirtle? Like no, no, he is just so cute. <laughs> Squirtle's just so cute. You know, you put a picture up of him. Yeah, you know, well, he's well, lovely. <laughs> and that he's a squirrel mixed up with a turtle. turtle. You know, I've never, I've, you know, I've, well, I learned a lot learned today. today right? <laughs> you learned something. Thank you so much. This is oh. great. Pleasure. Thank you. Well, thank you. I want to be the very best, like no one ever was. To catch them is my real test, to train them is my cause.